Um, I'm, I'm from a small Swiss company. We work on a, on a contracted based open source development. We have a couple of products and uh, what I'm going to show here is a cooperation with NOAA from USA uh, on uh, publishing of the pre-rendered maps. So it's a new open source style server project uh, and uh, let's start. Whenever you, as you probably know, when, whenever you uh, look at a pinnable map, uh, in fact, you are, you are seeing tiles, uh, small PNG JPEG files with uh, predefined uh, geographic location. And uh, uh, the, this, these tiles are normally uh, rendered uh, dynamically from the, from the uh, data on a server. So you install a special software, map server, geo server, and this ser server is accessing geotiffs or the original raw data and providing them to the web, to the client, through the WMS server. Um, the more modern approach, faster, uh, is, uh, is uh, pre-rendering or seeding of these, uh, of these data. So, so the, the, the tiles, the, the small, small images are in fact uh, faster available because you store them already somewhere. And uh, with the seeding approach, in fact, in fact, you run a software which, which is grabbing uh, these tiles in advance and storing them uh, somewhere um, on the way between, between the client and, and the server. So it's faster uh, than just rendering them dynamically. With the pre-rendered uh, approach, uh, which is now standardized as WMTS, uh, you, can also, you can also just get the raw data on your um, desktop computer or on your server, but uh, during the time of the update and crunch all process all these data and create create the tile set in advance and this is this is the approach which we are taking for for this or on which we are uh, speaking during this presentation um, with this with this pre-rendering approach uh, traditionally already for years there is digital to tiles utility um, which was my student project for for Google uh, and uh, you can also pre-render vector data with style mail, uh, you probably know, and uh, there are other, other approaches. Uh, we will show the, the map tiler, which is kind of like advanced version of GDAL2 tiles. Um, there are several advantages and uh, disadvantages of the pre-rendering approach. Um, you can read it yourself on the slide. The most biggest advantage is uh, usually if you have, if you ha have high quality hosting, uh, with, uh, with agreements and uh, or, or if you host your website in the cloud, you can simply put the map data in the same location as your, as your web uh, content, like HTML files and, mm -hmm. and PDF or whatever appears else on the website and still have the zoomable map interaction uh, through the JavaScript libraries like open layers uh, without a need to install any other software. And this, this can be quite, uh, quite um, quite a good thing because, because if you install a software, you have to maintain it. It can stop to run. You have to, you have to upgrade the versions. If you simply have there the data, it's much more reliable. Also, uh, without, without uh, the dynamic aspect, um, it's, uh, it, it's then uh, even faster than, than if there is a software in between uh, for the serving because the web servers are normally optimized for a really, really fast delivery of the content which is on the disk. And uh, uh, this, this is the, the, the advantage of, uh, of using this pre-rendering approach for, for sharing the data. Of course, it's not, uh, it does not fit to all the data which you have. If, if you have data which are regularly updated um, and uh, uh, you, you, need, you need to change change what, what is visible to the people, then this approach is probably not, not the best one. Uh, because you would have to do the processing and handling a lot of data transfers of on the server. Uh, and uh, on the other side, if you have something like a base map, which you create once, and then it's, then it's on the server for years without any change, and uh, you have large number of visitors accessing the maps, then, then uh, this pre-rendering approach is really the way to go, especially if you don't have like a huge amount of data. Uh, then, then you can even use uh, really cheap hostings and, and uh, you, you save yourself a lot of headaches with the hosting. Um, it's also recently launched quite a lot, the, the pre-rendered tiles with the mobile applications where the mobile developers are using it also for offline caching, offline storing on the mobile devices. So you have it with you, 
somewhere on the way, and uh, as well as, as hosting the tiles on the server. Um, the most straightforward way how to, how to see the tiles is in fact the directory structure, where you have the pyramid with the zoom levels, and X and Y coordinate uh, for the storing of the tiles. So, so uh, if you run GL2 tiles or map tailor, you typically get, typically get this, this directory structure with Z, uh, X and Y, and, and the tile. And this is like directly mapping, mapping what you need to, to share for, for the open layers or other JavaScript viewers uh, to, to the world. So, so if, you, if you simply open Google Maps API, it is able to load tiles and display these. Um, the alternative to the folder storage is some kind of like package of wrapper uh, where the tiles are in fact the same tiles more or less are just, just put into SQLite uh, or, or uh, people are using GeoTIFF as well as, as the storage for the tiles because it, it's also just a container, something where you can put, put those uh, pre-rendered uh, images internally. There are again advantages, disadvantages. Um, with, the, with the package, you already need some kind of software which is serving it. Uh, on the other side, it's really easier to transfer the data from one server to another because you don't have to handle uh, potentially millions of small files, and uh, that's good. Um, so traditionally, the access on the server is done just, just directly through this ZX and Y, and uh, uh, there are also, like if you need more, if you write a, a viewer for Z and X, Y, you are kind of like missing the metadata. What is the bounding box? How, where should I zoom? What are the available zoom levels? And this is, this is being solved by TileJSON uh, recently quite well in the, in the web world. Of course, there are, there are, uh, there are online uh, or there are standards which is solving this problem pretty well. But um, TileJSON is more designed for, for, the, for the JavaScript viewers and uh, and other viewers uh, are using it as well. Um, these uh, pre-rendered tiles uh, can be hosted practically anywhere. So you just, uh, you just can copy them on any cloud, cloud service. Uh, on Amazon S3, you can, you can just put them on whatever server you have in the company. Can be Windows server, you just, just copy the files there. And if, if, uh, if the directory is exposed to the web, suddenly uh, your maps are available as a resource on, on the website and it's, it's really fast. Um, you can even host in free hostings, free PHP hostings or, or Google Drive, Dropbox, or such a crazy things. If you are a student and you don't have any budget at all, it's even possible to have the maps online, online uh, with these free services. If you are serious, of course, you, you will set up something like uh, Nginx server with, uh, um, with uh, uh, optimized, uh, optimized web server for serving the tiles really fast and uh, or use some kind of cloud service or CDN service for distribution of the maps. Um, and here we come to the WMTS. Um, so the XYZ is nice but we have a standard now uh, and uh, the question is how to expose the maps which are pre-rendered uh, into the tiles through this uh, um, OpenGIS consortium standard. And uh, we, uh, we work with, uh, with other people on the open source project which is doing exactly this. Um, we were kind of like pushed to use PHP for not that it would be the best language in the world, not at all, uh, but, uh, but it's uh, the easiest one to install. And the idea of the project is that you, that you put the uh, that it's really easy to use. You simply you simply put the tiles uh, into into the folder on a on a web hosting server. You put next to it the PHP files, uh, which are in the project and simple HDXS file on on Apache. And uh, once once uh, these these tiles are in the same folder as the as these uh, PHP files from the project, uh, you get an online service which is officially uh, following the WMTS specifications. This means you can, you can open uh, the maps in a, in a traditional GIS desktop clients like QGIS, RGIS desktop and, uh, and others, but also reuse the tiles uh, in, a, in a modern, uh, modern viewers and mobile devices. 
So uh, the first first reason why to work on the tile server was the easy to use uh, usage for for um, normal people who are beginners or who don't want to uh, install and uh, host host uh, maintain special server software or who do not have server where they can install it. Um, the the other cool stuff which we did is reverse engineering of the S3 WMTS implementation. According to my knowledge. Um, this is the first open source project which is really exposing WMTS in a way that, uh, that S3 products can open it. Uh, so we, we had to um, study the, the way how, how S3 implemented WMTS standard. They are always finding a bit different ways than, uh, than exactly straightforward implementation of the standard. So, so we, we, find we, we were following their way in, in uh, like um, providing the WMTS the way that it's compatible with with their clients, um, so that's that's an interesting and cool stuff on this project as well. And uh, then we come up with uh, with one more idea uh, on uh, on how to implement the tile server, and uh, this th that's the idea that uh, in fact. Um, very often, if you are implementing tile server, you need some kind of uh, user interface. And you have to implement it in this language, that language, and that language if you have maps hosted on various technologies. And um, we, in fact, uh, come up with the, uh, with the um, uh, idea of, uh, of having just an exposure of, uh, uh, of a list of metadata about the tile grids and uh, do all the user interface in JavaScript. So, so the JavaScript is loading this, this small small list of uh, information about the maps, about the tile grids, and, and building the whole uh, interface, which uh, looks like, like this in the end, uh, for, for previewing the tiles and giving people a uh, way how, how to use the tiles and how to use the, the map layers. Um, uh, there are now alternative implementations being implemented for the tile server, so the same ideas are now being ported from, from the PHP language to other uh, languages. Um, there are students in Switzerland uh, working on some master thesis on, on rewriting it, the, the tile server into, PH, into Python. Um, we are, we are uh, shaping a bit the map cache project uh, to, uh, to um, have the C++ implementation, uh, which gives you very, very fast um, hosting for the MB tiles as well. And uh, we have Amazon S3 implementation, so, so no server software at all, just pushing the tiles to the cloud, but you still get the, the, the user interface and the, the access as it is presented here. In fact, the tile server PHP has been used in, uh, in production uh, by NOAA uh, for the Hurricane Sandy response imagery. So they replaced ArcIMS server uh, with these uh, pre-rendered tiles and simple PHP. And uh, uh, the reason for doing this was that uh, during, during these events, uh, the people were accessing, uh, there were too many people accessing the server. And the server crashed simply because, because there were too many clients accessing, accessing the same data sources. And they, they replaced, uh, replaced the service for providing the maps and tell simple, simply all the, all the people who were, who were keen to use the, the imagery just after they were flying with the, with the airplanes, they just put the tiles, process tiles on the server and uh, provided all the others um, the access to WMTS. Most of the people never recognized that it's not ArcIMS anymore because it's just, it was just different URL. They were loading, loading the data into, into their GIS clients and doing further, further analysis, uh, overlaying the data visualizations and so on. So uh, the project has been in fact used on uh, production already last year. Um, if we go through the process of how, how the tile server can be used, how, how easy it is in fact to put the maps in this way on a, on a server. Um, the first step is uh, to render the tiles. Uh, the easiest is probably to use uh, the map tiler, which is a desktop application. You just choose in the first step what kind of tiles you want to render. Uh, you drop in the geodata there GeoTIFF is supported. Everything what GDAL can read is supported. So Mr. Sit, ECW, GeoTIFFs, um, a lot of a lot of data formats, 
and uh, you can just specify the coordinate system and, uh, and uh, uh, georeference is loaded uh, from the file if it's available inside of the file. If not, you can, you can specify it manually through the user interface as it's shown here. You get a preview where the image is located and then you can choose if you want to render into folder or into a package. Uh, there are advanced options as well for setting zoom levels and so on. Then you wait a bit and it's in a processing, uh, process, it's processing the data. It's able to combine also multiple files into seamless layers and uh, has uh, another advantage is, and once you are done, you end up, you end up with these uh, crunch tiles already prepared on your disk and uh, you can preview these in the application. So if you render into a folder, you end up with something like this, already prepared viewer. If you just open the Google Maps viewer, leaflet viewer, you, you, get, you are getting the zoomable application. You can start to enrich it uh, with other functionality, put markers on top of it, or, or use it as a single layer from multiple layers and so on. But the raw data are prepared. Then second step um, is the upload of these data into, into a hosting anywhere, together with the tile server PHP. So you go to the, to the project website, just download, download the zip file, unpack it, and, and into the same folder where you unpack the file, you just put the, uh, the folder with the tiles. And uh, once, you, once you visit the website, it gives you this, this uh, user interface already, which is completely JavaScript based with the list of the tiles. And uh, by clicking on one of, one of the maps, uh, you get uh, the preview in uh, Google Maps and a ready to use viewer. Uh, and for, uh, in fact, multiple viewers, and um, by by clicking on the show show source, uh, uh, you get you can just copy and paste it and uh, uh, host it somewhere else as as uh, HTML. It's directly loading loading the the layers um, into the viewer. Uh, you can use uh, use the maps on the desktop as well. So we have we have step by step guides for for various uh, desktop clients which are which are directly supported. So so you s there is even even a way how uh, I mean showing showing uh, step by step what where you should click and what you should type so that the maps appear inside of the of the uh, GIS software and all of this uh, without any installation of the software. I mean it's. Uh, it's three, three PHP files on a hosting and, uh, and the tiles uh, uploaded. And uh, the performance is uh, really, really good. I think it's uh, comparable to, to uh, map cache and it's significantly faster than, uh, than the dynamic uh, approaches for, for doing this. Because in fact, the, the tiles are served as pre-rendered files by the web server. They are not served through PHP. Uh, so, so all the headers are, are correct. The HTTP tells you this, this tile has modification date uh, uh, back, back uh, when you were rendering it. And, and in case, in, so, so simply it runs fast because, because all the HTTP protocol uh, handling is done by the, by the Apache or, or other web server. And this is highly optimized already. And all what the PHP stuff is doing is providing the metadata and the XML files, which are loaded once in the beginning by the clients, and then, then the raw image data are accessed through the web server directly. If you are interested in the, in the project, this is the main, main URL. If you are interested in the MapTiler, uh, you can get it at uh, MapTiler.com. Uh, there is also, like if you compare the GDAL2 tiles and MapTiler, uh, we worked quite hard on, on uh, improving the performance and uh, the whole, the whole uh, utility has been rewritten into C, C++ and uh, um, it's also available for, for using in, in uh, processing through batches. So as a command line application next to the uh, user interface which you saw. So it's both uh, easy to use but also um, usable in, in automated processes. Uh, it's uh, able to render very large data sets. Um, we, we were, yeah, let's have a look on some examples. We rendered, for example, the Ordnance Survey Open Data complete uh, data set. So we, we have uh, the spherical Mercator tiles pre-rendered. It's about 15 gigabytes of data, which you simply put on a server. And you have, uh, you have full replacement of Open Space API, which you control and you are not restricted by anything. 
Uh, all what you need is a simple hosting with 15 gigabytes of uh, space on, on the server. And, and you can zoom in and use Google Maps API, Leaflet, uh, um, the, the mobile uh, Android, Android SDK for the maps, either Google One or, or open source one, or, or iPhone access uh, to the data. And uh, this, this can be used as a background maps for additional, additional resources. It's in fact used by police in the UK in some, some of their internal applications. Uh, another, another application is, uh, is on the old maps. Together with National Library of Scotland in the UK, we, uh, we made a uh, uh, base layer based on uh, seamless, seamless historical maps for the whole, whole United Kingdom. And there are several clients, uh, several uh, iPhone native mobile applications and web applications, uh, research projects who are using this instead of the Google Maps base map and putting their, uh, their own historical data on top of this base map. You see how fast the maps are loading. And other commercial applications in UK, just to show a few. Uh, Google is using the same approach in our software or was using it on, uh, on the uh, aerial photos uh, of the fires in Australia. Um, the researchers are, are using it, for example, for the uh, magnetic visualizations of the Earth, uh, co commercial companies for um, uh, show, showing various, various visualizations. These are um, the, the um, uh, thermometry imagery for, for the roofs, how, how are the houses um, well isolated or not, and uh, the old maps. So this is this is the, the base links. If you want to use the projects, you are welcome. We also seek uh, contributors. So it's, it's on GitHub. You can, you can fork the tile server and uh, provide patches, report bugs, and uh, um, hopefully it's, you find it useful. Thank you for your attention.